Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your, your reading for July. Let's go ahead and get started here with an Oracle card. So what is it? Okay. Okay. Sadness and isolation. Don't freak out. It doesn't mean that this is going to be a bad month or anything. Okay. Sadness and isolation. It probably means you're going to need to do some stuff alone right now. Okay. You're going to need to have that solitude. You're going to need to be alone. You're going to need to be kind of singular, if you will, to go through some kind of motion, to go through some sort of a process that maybe you're releasing something, you're letting something go. Maybe you're trying to attune to what's really going on inside of you so that you make the right decisions and the right choices. I don't know that Sagittarius, well, we'll see what the rest of the cards come out. I may contradict myself accidentally later, but with this one card alone, I'm not necessarily sensing that you're trying to rush into anything right now. I'm not sensing that you're trying to just go for it just for the sake of going for it. You know, I think if you're going to make an investment into something, Sagittarius, you want it to be well thought out. You want it to be strategized. You want it to be purposeful and meaningful. And, you know, I think maybe you really need to kind of take your time in that. And maybe there are things from the past that are kind of coming up that you're needing to deal with. And maybe there is some subconscious stuff that's happening that, you know, you're needing to kind of contend with and confront. And um, again, like I say, I don't think you're wanting to just jump or rush right into anything. I think you're just trying to feel your way through this on a day-to-day -day basis and you're trying to process this appropriately and uh, kind of just slowly move yourself into the next chapter. I mean, cancer season is maybe a more difficult season for you in general, just simply because it's eighth house activity. Eighth house is a little, it's a lot. Okay. There's a lot of change that happens here. We do have Saturn and Neptune retrograde going on. Um, we have a Mercury retrograde building as well. So, you know, there's all of this kind of turnaround energy going on. And maybe you're just kind of picking up on that eighth house stuff. Okay. So I kind of feel like this card here, surrender to the divine. Okay. So it does feel like there's something bigger picture going on. You may not fully understand it. You may not fully have your head wrapped around it, which again is why I kind of think you need to take your time with things and you need to kind of separate yourself from a lot of the noise in life, especially other people's opinions, other people's ideas. Do not concern yourself with what they think and what they would do because it's not them, it's you. And you really want to do what's right for you. Okay. I'm not saying people have bad advice. I mean, you may end up doing something that someone else has advised, but you're only doing it because you've come to that conclusion. Okay. And I think that this surrender to the divine um, kind of says that you're 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 letting yourself go through this. You're not trying to control it. You're not trying to run away from it. You're not trying to deny it. You're just going through it, and you're letting yourself be changed. You're letting yourself be transformed as the eighth house tends to do. And Jupiter opposite of you too can be highly transformative as well. Uh, Jupiter being so expansive and being so such an amplifying energy that, you know, there are probably things that are coming into focus in a big way. And sometimes when we have that illumination happen, it does change us. So I think Jupiter is also kind of has that transformative effects as well. So let's see what else comes through for Sagittarius for July with the tarot cards. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely not seeing speed happening here. Not with these first three cards anyway. Um, especially not the King of Coins. I never see him moving quickly at all. And this is very much not fire sign stuff. Okay. Like normally I see my fire signs, like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. There's an impatience, especially with Sagittarius, I'd say. Um, but not with my King of Coins, definitely not with the three of wands either. 
I look at my three of wands and I always see patience. And I don't even know, I don't even know what it's patience for. I mean, I kind of get the feeling that like, this doesn't have to do with your manifestations. I don't, I don't think this is about your goals or about you achieving things. I mean, I'm still seeing your goals and your work. Like everything is just underway. You're doing what you do. You're making things happen. You're going to work every day. You're engaged in, in what you're doing. Okay. This feels very much internal, which is kind of strange because not a lot of the readings have really come out this way. So I feel like this is a very unique reading for Sagittarius. Okay. It's more internal. This process, this journey is a deep one. And it's changing you, I think, a little bit more in your core, like in, in the essence of you, as opposed to this being, you know, oh, let's change your life. Let's go get the stuff we want. Okay. Because that stuff is already happening. Right? And I think you know that. I think you know that by doing the work that you're doing and by making the changes that you're making and, you know, by going about doing these things that, that those results will come. And I think you just have the faith and you have the knowing and you have that belief in yourself. Like, yeah, it's just going to come. The opportunities will show up. The money will show up. The people will show up. Like I, you know, that, you know, that as much as I do, it will happen. It may not happen in July, but it's happening and it is coming. And I think you can tell that that energy is already there. It's already coming in toward you. Okay. Um, so when I talk about these changes and things moving slowly, it, it just kind of feels like maybe there's a maturing process going on. Like you're kind of maturing and taking it up a notch. You're transcending something you've kind of a, a, a attained a new level of wisdom maybe. Um, cause I'm seeing a lot of wisdom actually coming through that King of coins. And with the judgment card, it does feel like an illumination. It feels like an epiphany or some kind of like coming up out of the darkness, like an aha moment, a light bulb turns on for you. Your mind all of a sudden sees something differently. Your perspective changes. Something is shifting deeply inside of you. And maybe you're even going through a process where you're going to start seeing yourself differently you know, and that's always kind of hard sometimes too, when you realize something about yourself that could use some work or realize something about yourself that could change or that could transform or realizing that a version of you is no longer there and that you're just a different person or something like that, you know, but this isn't something to fight. Remember, surrender to the divine. I think there's, this is a beautiful process that should be hopefully embraced. Let's see what else comes out for Sagittarius. Well, there's a Sagittarius card. Definitely not fast, not with that hanged man in the very center of the reading. I'm kind of getting, I mean, the word that first came out of my mind is like slow as molasses. It's like a very molasses kind of feeling. And maybe July will feel very much like that. I'm not saying that time is going to feel weird. Um, I mean, it might, but it just, something just feels very sticky about it. It's like, you can't really perceive what's really going on. But I think with the judgment and the hanged man, both, both of these cards together really speak to a significant change in perspective in the way you view the world. I mean, the angle at which you are looking at something, like if you've been looking at something straight on your whole life and now all of a sudden you're looking at it from the top down, like you'll, it's like, oh, well, I never saw that it was much bigger than I realized, or it was much differently shaped than I realized, right? You just have a completely different point of view. And when you have a completely different point of view, it changes how you go about doing things. It changes your strategy. It really could change your life. Now, when I say that this could change your life, I don't mean in a big, loud way. I, I don't know that this July is full of big, loud things. I really don't. I think July is very much about the smaller things 
And it's funny how even just a small perspective shift could actually be bigger than like a big tower moment, <laughs> you know, because that's kind of what I'm sensing is going to be bigger than a big tower moment um, in the long run, because it's going to completely change the way that you go about living your life. But I think you're amenable to that. I mean, I don't see you fighting against it. You know, I don't see you resisting or hesitating or being in denial. But again, this kind of the sadness and isolation, like pulling yourself away from things just to give yourself that time and and space to really process. Because I think something that's going on is very abstract. This judgment card can be so abstract. And it's not always easy to really make sense of it. It's not always easy to like, it's like you can feel it and you can sense it, but you can't really define it and you can't articulate it. That's for sure. Like articulating it and saying the words, like it's probably really, really hard to do that. Um, so what needs to happen is you just need to let some time pass and in time with that hanged man card, especially is like things are coming into consciousness. So something that is very abstract comes into consciousness and gets made sense of. So, um, it's again, it's, it's, it is a divine process. You are on a divine time frame. So you don't really have control over it. It's not like we can just sit there and, you know, close our eyes and make a wish and say, okay, make this clear. And then boom, it's all of a sudden clear. It, we know that, that doesn't really work like that, right? Sometimes, you know, when we have that feeling of like something is on the tip of our tongue, that's what we always say. Oh, it's just on the tip of my tongue. Like, what is it? I can't quite remember. It's like, oh, it's like right there. It's kind of the feeling I'm getting. And eventually it will come to you, but that's going to happen on the divine time frame, not on your own. And the Ace of Coins feels like that moment that it does. It feels like that moment that it finally becomes something tangible, something real, something understandable. All right. So it's, I mean, I, when I say time, I don't mean months and months and months. I mean that for the first several weeks of July through cancer season, you know, Maybe this is happening more toward the end of Leo season even, or I'm sorry, uh, toward the end of Cancer, beginning of Leo season, end of July, uh, when this Ace of Coins like really shows itself and says, okay, Sagittarius, here, here's something valuable to work with. Here's something real that you can do something with. And, you know, it really kind of hands it to you on a silver platter and, you know, again, your patience really paying off. Not that you have a choice. I mean, I think you're kind of forced to be patient here. You're forced to kind of just let this come in in its own time frame. Um, I mean, I do really like this Knight of Wands in terms of his ability to just continue living his life. Like, I don't think your life is on a standstill because of this. You're still going to be with your spouse, with your partner. You're still going to be, you know, living your life with your friends and going to work and earning money. Like everything will probably be the same. It's just that you are changing. And what happens is this is a product of what it is you've been asking for with your manifestations. Okay. This is a necessity. It is an internal change that must occur in order for the external change to occur as well. Because you've been asking for high level things, which means you need to elevate. You've been asking for more money. You've been asking for a relationship. You've been asking for a great career. You've been asking for a better place to live, or you've been asking for these things and vibrationally, you've had to get to that level because it always has to happen internally. Well, not always, but most of the time it happens internally first. And I think this is one of those moments where it is very much happening internally first. Okay. And we don't really want to disrupt this process because I think in, in a way it is a beautiful and sacred magician kind of process that's going on. 
that's why now the word sadness you know sometimes there can be a melancholy when we go through this you know there can be kind of a a feeling like you're losing yourself you're losing your identity a little bit like you don't really know who you are i think fundamentally you understand who you are but it's like you can't really grasp this identity very well and i think this north node in aries is kind of making it that way for everyone we all want to have this identity we all want to know for sure who we are but sometimes that picture is a little bit hazy it's a little bit fuzzy and we know that we're not really who we used to be and maybe we also know we're not quite exactly who we're trying to manifest ourselves to be so we're kind of in this limbo land a little bit so yeah maybe there is a little bit of melancholy there because you aren't necessarily entirely secure in that identity okay um but this is what happens when you're transitioning. And I think Jupiter in a sign like Gemini, which is mutable, it's just a big year of transitions, you know? And last year was also a big year of transitions because of Pluto. So like 2023 and 2024, it just they just haven't been the most... I'm not going to say stable. I mean, you know, it depends on us individually, but they just haven't been the most like locked in there's just a lot of openness about the about these years okay a lot of openness a lot of open for for change okay Sagittarius so when we hit Leo season okay end of July um Keep in mind, we also have a Chiron retrograde happening. So we'll have Saturn, we'll have Neptune, we'll have Mercury in pre-shadow, and we'll have Chiron retrograde. So we're getting ready for like retrograde season where all the planets start going backwards, kind of like one at a time, one right after the next. And I think this is coinciding with the Chiron retrograde at the end of the month because it does feel like this is clearly the kind of melancholy energy that I was just referencing. And I look at this five of coins and even the seven of coins, like there's clearly a place in your life that is just simply no longer satisfactory. Now, when I say that, I have to reiterate, I do this all the time. It doesn't mean you cannot be grateful and appreciative, okay? Because we, we don't want to have disdain for the things that got us to where we are today, right? We want to have that gratitude. We want to have that appreciation, but we also need to understand that Jupiter across from you is also really asking you to expand in profound ways. And that this, again, the identity that you held for a really long time is just simply no longer viable. So there is a complete overhaul and a complete reconstruction of this identity and I think, Sagittarius, you may feel a little bit lost. Um, but it feels like spiritually, I don't even like to use the word lost because you're never really lost. It's just that you're, again, trying to make sense of things. But in the world, I'm looking at this king of coins, like in the world, you're fine. Your money is fine. Your career, your job is fine. Your house is fine. Like everything is fine. Everything is stable. Everything is what it is. Everything is taken care of, right? You're in a good place, most of you, at least. Most of you are in a good place. But this, it just feels a little ineffable. And I use that word a lot in June as well. This ineffability. Things are just kind of evolving and it feels like things are kind of slipping through our fingers a little bit and and time is feeling kind of strange and um I don't know it's just like we're caught in this current and I see that a lot with the hanged man and especially with the surrender to the divine card we're just sort of caught in this current and there's really not a lot we can do about it we're just moving on into the next phase of life and as much as we try to grasp on to anything prior it's just we're not able to it just kind of slips through our fingers a little bit 
And when the moon card comes out, there can often be things that surface like insecurities, like fear, like anything else that's kept held, you know, uh, kept deep in our subconscious mind that has an impact in how we live our life. Sometimes that's a good thing because it illuminates certain patterning. It illuminates certain narratives within us that maybe we didn't realize we had operating in the background this whole time. And the illumination of those things can help us heal and help us move on and help us break free and find liberation from our own, you know, kind of our own stuff. Um, but it's not always the easiest process. And I do think that you are, I mean, there can be a lot of emotion that comes out during this time, but I also think Sagittarius is handling things very well. Like you're able to look at things from a 10,000 foot perspective and able to look down on it and say, and that's, again, that's the hanged man seeing it from a different angle. And you look at it very realistically with the seven of coins, like realistically, unemotionally, this is where I'm at. This is what we've got. This is what we're working with. And this is the reality of my situation. So how do I go from here to where I want to go? You know, so it, it may come up and it may not be the easiest thing to acknowledge about yourself or about your life, but it's also helping you as you make plans for how you want your future to go. And there's also a massive release going on um, because when the moon comes out, it's it's not just coming up to create havoc in your life. It's coming up so that it can be set free. So you can be set free. So a lot of the patterning won't impact you anymore, right? You're fundamentally changing like on a core neurological level. And the way you go about your life, the way you operate in life is also evolving. All right. So it is very deep. It feels really deep to me. Um, and maybe this is Saturn retrograde in the fourth, along with cancer season, fourth house, eighth house, you know, it's just a little bit deeper, but the thing about fourth house and eighth house, also the water signs, cancer, Pisces, these are called the moksha houses, right? In Vedic astrology. So this is about freedom. Okay. It is a freedom oriented place, but we do that through healing and we do that through change. All right. So healing in the fourth house, change in the eighth house, not always easy, but it does change your life. It really does. Um, let's go ahead and pull out the clarifiers. Okay. So for those of you who are new here, we're about to pull out a bunch of new cards and we're going to cover those in the comprehensive reading. We usually talk for like 25 to 30 extra minutes. So it's like a whole second reading. Um, so if you want to join, the information is in both the description box and the pinned comment thread down below. So if you want to join, you are more than welcome. So let's go ahead and take a look. What else does Sagittarius needs to know about this King of Coins? Beautiful. Ten of coins, seven of wands, another five of coins, 10 of swords, high priestess. There's the knowing that I was talking about, like, yeah, you know, and there's a the magician energy, um, page of wands, hierophant, and the lovers love the lovers the world. You know, I haven't had one of these really profound readings in a long time. Um, this is a very unique reading. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Very unique page of coins, 10 of wands, three of wands, four of wands, a lot of wands there in the center. Two of Wands, beautiful. Another King of Coins. Two of Swords. Now for this bottom row, it'll be interesting to see what comes out. The Hermit, also the Isolation, the King of Wands. Temperance. I'm feeling a lot of consideration, like Sagittarius is considering a lot right now. Eight of Coins. Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> Three of Swords, 
I had I am laughing because I was actually just thinking I was like, huh, I'm surprised the Three of Swords didn't come out. And then all of a sudden there it comes out. Of course. Of course it did. Okay, because it's been coming out quite a bit, actually, for a lot of the signs. So three it's kind of like the theme card for the month. Chariot, King of Cups. And final card for Sagittarius, the Knight of Coins. Okay, so this is where we're going to pick up in the comprehensive. So if you want to join, you are more than welcome. Thank you all so much for everything. You guys know I love and adore you. Have an amazing July, and I'll talk to you soon.